Hey everybody, we're celebrating Photoshop's 30th anniversary. And to do that, I'm doing 30 of my best Photoshop tips. So this is part two, it's a three-parter, so I have already done 10 tips. If you haven't seen them yet, check those out, but stay tuned for 10 right now that are gonna save you a ton of time. These are those kind of tips that you just, ah, you wish you'd known before, you kick yourself for not knowing because you've done things the slow or the hard way or struggled with things that I'm gonna help you with right now. <laughs> Hey Cafe Crew, we are continuing celebrating Photoshop's 30th anniversary and I've got 10 more great tips for you right now. Just a fun fact with the different versions of here, even though I started on 2.5, which was on the floppies, this version here, Photoshop 6, not CS6, but Photoshop 6 is when I started creating tutorials, when I made my first training video. And then later on, I started writing for Photoshop User Magazine. I've been writing for them for, I don't know, 14 years, 15 years, and I've been writing the tips column inside every issue of this magazine. So anyway, let's get started with the tips. All right, so here's a little composite that I started doing this morning, just kind of playing around. This is Taylor Davis, an amazing violinist. Check out her YouTube channel, uh, Taylor Davis Violin. So first tip is text. So you wanna add some text on here. How many times have you selected the text tool and you wanna add some, you click, and what does it do? It selects the previous text. And so you wanna actually just create new text and not select the text underneath. So if we go down here, we click and nope, it selects that text. Has this been a problem? Okay, here's the trick. Hold down the shift key and then click and I can add new text wherever I want. That's all you've got to do. Now here's another tip. If I double click, I can select all this text. And if I want to resize it, that'd be shift command on Mac, shift control on Windows, and then use the greater than or less than keys, which are the ones directly here by the M key to change the size. And since Photoshop CC 2019, we don't have to click up here or there to enter the text, just simply move away and then just click. And we're done, simple as that. Now here's an interesting one. People are always asking about how to change the units of measurement. So we're not going from millimeters, we could be going to centimeters or whatever we want. Well, it's quite simple. Hit Control or Command R brings on rulers and we can see right now we're working in pixels. All we need to do is right click and we can change it to inches or centimeters or points, whatever we like. And by the way, Control R will get rid of that. But while I'm in here, why don't I show you a couple of bonus tips? So if you want to drag out a guide, you just click and drag a guide, right? So we can, you know, line things with it. Now, if you hold down the Alt or the Option key, you can change that from a horizontal to a vertical. So we can go in there and do it that way. To get rid of it, just simply click and drag it off the page. All right, speaking of keyboard shortcuts, we all love keyboard shortcuts, right? So did you know you can modify them and you can also print out a set of keyboard shortcuts from Photoshop? All you need to do is hold down all the modifiers that Shift, Option, Command, and that would be Shift, Alt, Control on Windows, the three modifier keys, and then hit K for keyboard. And this will bring up the keyboard and here's a cool thing that a lot of people don't realize. All we need to do is click on Summarize. It'll bring up this window here, and we just click Save. And now it will create a set of keyboard shortcuts. And this will reflect any of the custom keyboard shortcuts that you've applied. And then you can just simply print this or save it to a PDF. Okay, here's a big one, working with layer style. So say we wanna put a drop shadow around this text here. We're just gonna go in here and we're gonna create a drop shadow. And why don't we just turn that all the way up, set that to normal, set that distance way down, turn the size down. Okay, so I'm just gonna set this to here. So we've got a pretty simple drop shadow, click okay. Now, if I wanna apply this to these other layers with text, all I need to do is right click and I'm gonna choose copy layer style. Then I'm gonna select these other layers here by clicking, shift click, to add that one, control or command click. And all we need to do is right click and choose paste layer style. And now what we've done is we're gonna get that style from all the other ones. So there we go, we've now got that drop shadow. Well, here's the thing though, if I wanna change one of these, what I have to do is 
literally change one, then sync it and save it again. So here's another way. If we want to do them all the same, what I can do is I can take all these type layers, put them inside a group, control G for group. And let me get rid of that effect. I'm just going to drag it into the trash. Okay, so we've got no drop shadow. And so here's the thing. Now I can apply this drop shadow to the layer group. And notice now it applies to all of them at the same time. And it's not forcing them to have the same opacity or anything like that. And this way, if I want to change something, all I need to do is just double click on here. And, you know, if I wanted to put a glow around it, which, you know, probably not going to do, but I could just very easily click once and applies it to all those layers. But now what if there's a layer that I don't want to do those effects to, like say time is running out. All I need to do is just drag it above the group. And now we get it outside of there and I can apply my own effect. Now, if I want to use the same effect, if I just hit the out or the option key, I can copy that just by clicking and dragging. And notice now that that effect is there. Let me turn the opacity up on this one because I want to show you a little trick here. Sometimes I want to do an, a double glow around here to make it look a little bit more realistic. All right, so let's put an outer glow on it so we can just double click. We're going to go in the effects and we want to add an outer glow. So let's add a bluish color to it. Maybe a little dark. Let's go a little lighter here with the blue. There we go. Okay, so why don't we turn the opacity up a little bit? And what we're doing is we're putting a glow around it. Let me turn that size down a little bit. So sometimes what looks better for these kind of things is if I do a double glow. So I've got this first glow here, but what if I make that thinner? And then I want to have a second glow, which has a little bit less color and it makes it look like it's radiating. It's a little bit more realistic. Well, here's one of the weird things. If you look in here, we can copy a lot of different layer styles, including a color overlay, which I don't understand why we can make, why we need to make multiple color overlays. But with the outer glow, there is none. So here's the trick. This is what I do as I just use a drop shadow. And with the drop shadow, if I take my distance to zero and let's set that color to, you know, something like a fainter blue, just a little bit, we can give it that glow. And now keep the distance set to zero and then just increase the size. And notice now that that drop shadow will work exactly the same as a glow. So if I want to do multiple glows like that now, I can do that. So if we look at this, look at it before and after, there it is with the single glow and see how the second glow just gives it a little bit more ambience. And if it's too much, of course you can play around with that opacity and you'll get a much better look there. All right, so here I am working on a composite. And as you can see, I've got a ton of layers in here and some of them are being used and some of them aren't. So what do we do? How do we clean this up and get rid of the layers we're not using? Well, it's quite simple. Just make sure you select a layer that's visible first. Then we go under layer, then go down to delete. And then you're going to choose hidden layers and click yes. And now it's going to get rid of all the hidden layers for you. Let me give you an additional tip. When you're working inside a composite, sometimes you have a lot of areas, you know, that go outside the area of the screen. And that's all going to add to the size. So if you actually look at the overall size, if we click here, we can see document size is showing. There's our full size and there's our compressed size or our pack size. Our saved size is 3 megs. This one's 324. I've downsized it quite a bit for this tutorial, by the way. Uh, but if I want to save space, so what we can do is go to a layer here with pixels on it. And I'm going to hit control A to select everything. Then we just choose image crop. And then what that will do is it will get rid of all the pixels outside of the area that you can't see. So if you're running out of space and you need to do it, you can do that. Another thing is if you run out of space and you need to run a filter, if you go up under edit, then go down to purge and then choose all, click OK. So what that'll do is it'll clear out your memory, your history, um, anything that's saved in cache, it'll clear all of that out and free up your RAM so you can continue to work. I know I'm well over 10 tips, but I'm going to give you a couple more right now. The first one, what I want to do is create a composite layer. So if we look at this, we've got all these different layers together. Look at this, there's a lot of different layers. So I'm just going to select the first one, hold down the shift key and select on the top. So I've selected all the layers. I'm going to hit shift option command, and that would be shift alt control 
on Windows and E. And what that will do is it'll give you a new layer on top that consists of all the layers together. So rather than flattening them and losing the ability to go through and change them, we can drop this layer on top and then this enables us to do things like go into camera raw here. And then say I wanted to do adjustments and give a bit more contrast to the overall image. Maybe I wanted to give it more vibrance and just kind of generally change the look and feel, you know, do a little playing around with the color. And then I can do a final pass. Now I love to do this for the final coloring pass. I like to put it in there so we can see before and after, see how I was able to work on all of those layers together. And an additional tip, sometimes I'll take this and I'll look at, you know, the layers underneath. I'm taking the opacity to zero. Sometimes I'll just blend it in so I get a mix between the original colors and the new color that I've created in Camera Raw. And sometimes that's the Goldilocks amount that I like. All right, guys, I've definitely over delivered. I've done more than 10 tips. So I've got 10 more coming in the next episode. Once again, this is the second episode of the 30 tips. And by the way, I'm curious, any of these new to you guys, let me know what your favorite one was in the comments and if you learned any new ones. And by the way, if you're new here to the Photoshop Cafe, consider hitting the subscribe button right now so you get all these tips from me, including the next ones that I'm gonna do very soon. Turn on the notification bell so you know when I upload, which is usually every Tuesday. So anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. Happy 30th anniversary Photoshop or happy birthday, I guess. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe. And celebrating Photoshop's 30th anniversary. Okay. So to celebrate Photoshop's 30th anniversary. So to celebrate the Photoshop's. All right, to celebrate Photoshop's. Jeez. To celebrate Photoshop's. Hey, everybody. We're celebrating Photoshop's 30th anniversary. Anniversary. 30th anniversary. Why is that such a tongue twister? 30th anniversary, 30th, Photoshop's 30th anniversary. Photoshop turns 30, maybe that's easier to say. <laughs>